Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Uh, today, we are joined with Colin Plume, the CEO of Noble Gold. Noble Gold is one of our top sponsors, and for a very good reason, many people are very satisfied with the fact that they can invest their money in something that is going to be relatively inflation proof they they like to see those positive returns you know you have the stock market it's very volatile uh but when it comes down to gold uh you see the fact that a lot of people are putting their money in precious metals and they're seeing positive returns so thank you uh for joining us for this interview yeah thank you excited to be on and and obviously uh the debt ceiling uh has been a big conversation for everybody recently and the we didn't know what was going to happen if we're going to default and the markets were reacting to that. And it looks like we have a deal in place, uh, which uh, obviously everyone's relieved because uh, if we didn't put that deal together, there's so many things that could happen in our economy. I mean, the stock market would just crash. Uh, Social Security benefits could not get paid. Um, and there's some some good things that you know, I don't think it's the best deal in terms of cutting spending, but there was a few things in there that I liked. They did uh, pull back some of the IRS agents that they're going to be hiring. Uh, so that was one of the provisions in there. There's going to be less. You know, they talked about adding 80,000 IRS, IRS agents. They cut that back by about 21,000. Um, so I think that was a, a positive for most people that were concerned about this kind of overbearing IRS coming in and uh, you know, there were some talks about IRS agents with guns. And so it sounds like they've kind of pulled things back uh, at least a little bit. Um, and um, but, yeah, we avoided uh, catastrophe by uh, by them uh, putting a deal together. Yeah, I think that does tend to be the consensus. They A lot of people really feel as if the deal was not the best deal. They still, for example, have a lot of the the liberal pork in there like the irs agents and a lot of people are not really that happy about it but it is true that um they are holding back on a default uh which technically that is good for the economy and it's good for investments the stock market at least for the time being because this is for what i understand something that's only going to be temporary there's still you know kicking the can down the road there still will be a potential for um, defaults in the near future. So when it comes down to defaulting, you talk about precious metals. How does how is that market going to respond to a default compared to, you know, your typical stock market, bonds, investments, you name it? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, similar to, you know, what happened during the pandemic, um, similar to what happened just a few months ago with the banks. I think when people are fearful they 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 want to go to safe haven investments and so they will typically go into things like gold and silver uh during those time periods and i and i have a client one of my oldest clients who's been buying for me for many many years and he <clears throat> the way he looks at gold is gold is your insurance in the event that things really go haywire and we've seen things happen that we've never seen before uh you know with these you know, and you're right. We are just kicking the can down the street. We are going to be in a default, potential default position again, probably end of next year, based on how much we're spending. Um, so yeah, I think it's it, you're buying something that's safe. You're buying something that has no counterparty risk. That's the one thing about buying physical precious metals. There's no, you don't have to worry about the other party not delivering. You're you're getting the physical gold and silver. Um, unlike a stock or unlike a lot of other things that always have that risk attached to it. There's, there's no risk uh, when you're buying these assets. And with all the industrial uses skyrocketing for gold and silver um, over the last few years, especially silver, uh, the, you know, everything that where we're moving towards is going to have some silver component in it from solar panels, uh, energy efficient vehicles. I mean, they're talking about getting rid of, you know, gas, for, you know, a lot of places all over the world, they're, they're not even going to have gas cars by probably 2040 or in a very limited supply. They, they want to get to 50% EV cars by 2030. So silver is a big component of that. So you have this industrial driver uh, of these metals. So you have that kind of underlying, you know, strength. Uh, and then you just have this very strange economy where, uh, people just don't feel comfortable in the banks anymore. And 
you know, I don't know how you felt when, you know, those banks were, were going down, but, you know, it obviously it, it makes it uh, nerve wracking for people to, to go to a place that you think is a safe place and then realize that they're investing um, in things that aren't safe and they're, they're actually being quite risky uh, with people's, you know, hard earned money. And that, and that scares people. Yeah, it absolutely does. And when it comes down to the whole bank failures that we saw, I think we saw three of like the largest or two of the largest three or something like that in history over the past couple of months or so. And it wasn't really talked about as much as a lot of people really should have been talking about it. But do you think that because uh, it's kind of out of the news cycle, but do you think that there's a chance that you're going to see more bank failures in the near future? And how will that impact the economy when it comes down to something like a, a recession or, or something that could be even worse than that, for example? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the reason it's not uh, a guessing game, uh, it, it really comes down to if interest rates are going to stay where they are or if we're going to get back to where they are. Because if interest rates stay where they are, uh, we know vacancy is high in a number of different sectors in, in commercial real estate. With these high rates and high vacancy, there is a lot of small and medium-sized banks that hold this debt. And so they are not going to be able to refinance this debt at what they're looking to do. And then the borrowers obviously are in a position where they're not going to have the funds either. So we're going to be in this really strange position again, uh, which we were in 2008 and 2009, where... Are, they, are we going to go in and bail out a, a lot of these small, medium-sized banks uh, with with massive debt? And I know in 2008, 2009, there was a lot of debt that came to the table. There's a lot of residential debt and homes. But we're talking about something totally different. With these high-rise office buildings all across the country, there's, there's no easy way to turn these into profit. It, it, one thing when you're buying, you know, banks in 2009, they bought you know, they'd say a few thousand homes or 5,000 homes. They knew eventually people were going to move into those homes, right? They would be able to eventually profit. These office buildings in many of these cities, they they can't easily be turned into anything. If people aren't going back to the office, which I don't think they are. I, don't, I think people aren't going back the way they used to. So we're going to have a problem with these office buildings. They're not set up to turn them into residential. So there's a lot of debt and, and in a position where you have the borrower that's saying like, listen, I, I anticipated five to 10% vacancy. I'm at 30% vacancy now. And I got this debt coming due in a few months. What do I do? And then the bank's saying, well, what are we going to do with it? What, what am I going to do with that? I'm just going to sit on these buildings. You know, that's, I'm not in that business. The banks are not really in that business. So it's a, it's a predicament that we have coming forward. So I think a lot of small, medium sized banks, uh, second, uh, third and fourth quarter this year are going to have a lot of problems. And uh, I think we have a lot of debt coming. So we have a, a, a lot, another year or two of pain uh, with these rates. And that's why I've predicted, I do think at the end of the year, I do think they lower interest rates, uh, not because probably the Fed wants to. I think they like what they're doing. They think they have to do it this way and keep high interest rates. But I don't think they're going to have a choice. I think they're going to have to lower interest rates by the end of this year. Otherwise, we will see a commercial, uh, a real estate loan bomb go off. And the whole economy will just, just be destroyed by all this debt that, that no one will be able to do anything with. Yeah, that's that's something that uh, is not really thought about a lot or talked about because you do have all this property that's not being used because of the digital age. You have more people that are right. working from home, especially after the pandemic. So uh, like we don't know what is going to happen with all of these these office buildings because we've really you know spent a lot of time building up in our cities and, and even in some of the suburbs, you still have major office buildings that aren't being used. And, and also the businesses that, that survive on those buildings, right? You have restaurants, you have, you know, shops around there, you have the parking structures. I mean, there's businesses within businesses, right? I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things happening there. You have the property tax that's probably not going to get paid. You know, these are massive buildings. So it, it is a bomb waiting to, to, to kind of, happen in terms of what could happen to the economy. There's so many jobs at stake, um, but I don't see those things coming back. So that's why when people say we're not in a recession, your typical recession, I think our economic growth is, is so slow and we have these huge potential debt problems that I believe we are currently in a recession, even though it's not your typical recession. I know they say unemployment is low, 
But there's a lot of sectors that are trying to find uh, people, manufacturing. There's a lot of sectors that are actually trying to hire, but we don't have the right skilled workers for those jobs. And so we're in this position where we're shifting. So we're trying to shift quickly uh, to make our economy strong, but it's not going to happen right away. It doesn't matter who's in office. It doesn't matter what, uh, what things are going to get passed. So we have a, another year or two or three of pain. Uh, and that's why I think people are sort of looking around and saying, you know, maybe I need to get out of stocks. Maybe I need to look at something more stable uh, and gold and silver, obviously uh, uh, very interesting. And then platinum, people are not, another thing people are talking about is platinum is so undervalued right now. They're having a hard time finding it. They are going to be using platinum more in those catalytic converters that are going into cars. And we have a massive shortage of platinum. Platinum sitting around a thousand dollars, a little bit above right now. So I think there's a lot of uh, potential with that metal too. So it's going to be an interesting in the commodity sector to see what really booms, which one really takes off first. Um, but there's a lot of potential uh, here just, just based on the fundamentals of, of all of these metals that we sell. Yeah. And, um, you know, we talk about unemployment, for example, it is low, but I mean, compared to where it was low four or five years ago, the people, uh, the amount of people in the workforce has significantly dipped. You have people that are getting paid to stay home. And the fact is the companies can't exactly uh, put the correct people in the right positions in order to stay productive. And that's not really a recipe for economic success by any means. Um, and inflation's another thing that I think a lot of people have been talking about. It's up significantly, even though it stopped increasing at the same rate. It's still Correct. this year, what, 5% on the year, something like that. And gold this year is up 6%. So it's outpacing um, inflation. I don't know what the stats are for platinum or silver. I'm sure you probably have a better idea of that. Yeah. I mean, uh, gold was, you know, gold pulled back about 3% over the last 30, 45 days. So but we were up over 10%. We had a little bit of sell off and, and I've been saying this for a while. I've been in the space for a long time. This 2000 number for gold is really like when it, when a metal or, or something's trying to set a new floor, it does take time. So you are going to have this, fluctuation between 1950 and 2100 it gold needs to get to 2300 which i think it will get to get to, to 2300 at some point this year but it needs to get there because then the 2000 becomes a pretty far number for it to go down to and i remember the same thing happened with gold when it broke a thousand uh you know broke a thousand in, in 2000 mid 2009 and it was fluctuating above and below that number the government came in and did quantitative easing phase one, two, and three, and it blew through a thousand, uh, went all the way up to, uh, to 1900 and 2011. So I think the government's going to have to do some kind of stimulus this year. I think a lot of people don't believe this, but I, I think they lower interest rates at the end of this year. And then we probably expand the money supply a little bit. So I think gold could really take off during that situation. Also silver, uh, silver sitting at half of, of where it was in 2011. So, you know, these metals are, it, it's not the flashy crypto, you know, a lot of people want these 10X, 20X, 30X investments. And and sure, everybody would love to get those returns. But also we've seen a lot of people get hurt. A lot of people lose a lot of money in those. Uh, a lot of people are just, you know, this year selling crypto and just taking the tax loss. Uh, so I, I think it's you have to look at the scheme of all these investments and say, OK, what's got the least downside risk? Obviously, you want upside potential. Um, but, you know, there's the traditional sectors right now, real estate stocks uh, are not looking as good as they have uh, in the past. Yeah, and uh, th that is true. So for the people that say gold's down um, you know, X amount of percent over the past 45 days. Do you, when do you believe, or do you believe that you're going to start to see another uptick again? Cause it does seem like you said, it's, it's more like a pattern than it is uh, like something that just shoots up like your, you know, Bitcoin enthusiasts like yeah. the, the tower crypto. Uh, you know, I think it, it, we, we got the debt ceiling in, in here. I think we'll see one or two more banks go down the summer uh, before the end of the summer, some, some bigger banks, um, that will give people some pause and, you know, they'll move some money out of the dollar and get into some gold and silver. Uh, and, and then it just really depends on what's happening with the third and fourth quarter 
And then what happens with interest rates? I think if interest rates stay high, if they keep them high, it's it creates a situation where employers, big corporations are nervous to add more employees. They're nervous to, to grow. They're nervous to take on additional investments. They're nervous to spend more money at these higher rates. So that could really slow the economy down for the rest of this year. And I know, you know, the Fed has said, you know, we're not trying to slow down the economy, but we have to keep, uh, you know, we have a mandate. They have a mandate to get inflation down to 2%. And I just think that number is unrealistic. I don't think we're getting back to 2% anytime soon. I think they'll have to change the mandate. I think they're going to have to go up higher. Most countries don't even look at a 2% inflation rate. Uh, and, and yes, we could skew the numbers and we could start taking more things out of CPI if that wants to make us mm, feel better. probably will. I mean, they changed what it meant to have a recession. So we're not in a recession right now. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's these are all the factors that everybody's looking for. And, and you need businesses to grow. You need business. We need this GDP growth to keep, to get this engine going again. Um, and that helps everything. The more this engine's going, the more there is in the economy, more people are spending more money for taxes. So we have to get this thing started again. I just, I don't know with this administration and, and what's going on with the fed, uh, if they want to, if they are forcing this, you know, if they're being sadists and they're just saying, we got to slow down the economy and we're going to hurt some people for a while or if they really see the bigger picture and realize we got to get this engine moving. Uh, and once it does, you know, a lot of these problems will be fixed. A lot of things we're talking about today will be fixed because at the end of the day, the GDP is growing. Even if inflation stayed at three or 4%, that means salaries are growing. That means profits are growing. I mean, all these things that we really need would be happening. Uh, but right now we're just, we're just in a pause. And, and that's why I think you're not going to see a lot of movement in anything. I think people are just, biding their time and just waiting to see what's going to happen over this uh, over this year. And wages uh, are not keeping up with inflation. And that's another thing, because uh, the American people are seeing the, the negative effects on a day to day regarding their income. And we talk a lot on this channel about electoral politics, and we know what happened in 2008. Definitely the um the bush administration kind of gave uh, mccain lower chances because of the state of the economy do you think that by 2024 we could see something similar happen with this administration and people are really going to see the negative effects could there be a housing crisis could there be like what is your prediction for uh the political or the economic climate for 2024 ahead of election season I think people vote with their pocketbooks. I mean, I, I really do think that. I think if, if the economy is good, uh, I think that they're more likely to, to keep that, you know, uh, same person in office. If they feel like things are getting better for their pocketbooks, they feel they feel that, too, which, you know, there's a lot of different things that can happen to to how that could affect uh, our economy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think people look at the government and say, you know, two things is that, you know, they want to be safe. And, and they want to grow their, their life and they want to keep up with their, their, their lifestyle of living. And, and that's the way that they are able to do that is they have to grow. And so right now people are looking at their 401ks and they're down. So that's not a good thing. Um, you know, job growth, you know, in terms of what jobs are out there are not fitting exactly for what people need right now. So I think if, if the, if the stock market's down, um, and things continue to trend in this direction. I think we get somebody totally new in office uh, in 2024. Uh, but if it turns, uh, you know, it's hard to know what can happen. I mean, people are I wish I wish people, you know, were voting on, on totally just the ideas of things that they and believing in the person. But I, overall, a lot of times people are just voting. They, they see something that's consistent. I mean, let, let's be honest, that's how Biden got in office. They had seen him before. He'd been in office before. And that's how and, and he, you know, people, some people thought they needed a change. And so they went in that direction. Um, but, you know, if he gets in again for another four years, I mean, he's in essence sort of lame duck president right now. I, I think it would be another four years of that. Not much happening. Uh, him able to not do much. And I hope he doesn't do anything more to try to increase our debt. Uh, because a lot of the measures that he's tried to pass have really just pushed us in a situation where we have more debt. And I think that's the last thing we need to be focused on right now. We should be trying to get this engine going so we can get our debt under control. $32 trillion is a scary number uh, for anyone. And uh, we need to figure out a way to get this under control. 
And what do you think the best way to deal with the debt is? Because it seems like whoever's in office, uh, Republicans, Democrats, whatever, they we, we don't have a balanced budget. Yeah. They do keep spending a lot on unnecessary things, and it's not benefiting the American people. And even if they don't see it right now in their pocketbooks or in their day to day, maybe they don't have a lot of personal debt. Uh, if we do have the default, which at some point, like I said, we're kicking the can down the road, it will likely happen at some point. Um, like, how are we going to be able to cut our debt? Yeah, I think it comes. It really just comes down to spending. It, more important than anything, I think it comes down to how we're spending our money and getting our spending under control. I think you could look at, you know, they've tried to raise, you know, raise taxes and they've tried to do different things, but it doesn't really work. At the end of the day, they need to realize that we have a certain amount of money coming in. This is how much is going to come in. And we need to make some serious cuts in a lot of the programs that we have going on out there. And it's not popular. And that's part of the reason that it sort of never happens. You have some politicians that just realize that going to their constituents and just saying, hey, we have to make some major cuts is not going to get them reelected. And that's why we've always sort of had this issue. Um, you know, I always think of, uh, you know, Andrew Jackson was the last president to get we had no debt under Andrew Jackson. That was yep. obviously a long time ago. Um, but to go back to, to his philosophy of like trying to get us out of debt or trying to get it under control. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have some debt, but yes, getting our debt in control would do a few things. One, it would give people confidence in our currency because we need that right now. Most of the nations in the world have no confidence in us as a country. And so if we can get our debt under, under control, maybe we go to a partially gold backed uh, a dollar again, where we back some of our dollars, at least partially by gold, give us some strength, give, give people a reason to believe in our currency again, that could fix a lot of problems. That could, because right now countries are searching, they're saying, we don't believe in the dollar, we got to find another currency. And and, they're, and and if it's not backed by something, what is that other currency going to do? It's not going to be any better, right? So we do need to make some major changes to how we deal with our fiscal policy. And I think those are the things that will fix it. But I do think, again, we got two or three more years of problems, unfortunately. I don't think we're getting out of this, you know, recession or, or depression, depending on who you talk to. Uh, so you got to protect yourselves and you got to, you know, a lot of people put their head in the sand when things are bad. You got to pull your head out and really just realize that, you know, no one's going to take care of yourself. You have to take care of your financial responsibility. You need to look at what your assets are. And you need to make sure you protect those assets in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, and, and I think, you know, having some gold and silver to diversify and some platinum, which I think is a good buy right now, is a great way to protect yourself against a lot of the things that are happening out there. And listen, we can't control everything, but you have to protect your uh, your financial well-being. Yeah. And uh, it's interesting you brought up Andrew Jackson because he, from what I understand, ended the first initial like bank of the United States that we had, the initial Fed. And then you have the gold standard um, that was, you know, it worked for so long and you saw high returns, you saw lower like inequality and things like that as well. And then uh, we end the gold standard, we institute the Fed, we go to fiat currency, right. and then we we see all of these problems. So do you believe we should return to the gold standard or do we do like a gold silver mix? Because I mean, there's yeah. people that will say we should go back to it in full. Some say it's not viable or feasible. So what's the, what's the I, noble gold take on that? I, I think we should go back. Maybe we use gold. Maybe we even use platinum. Silver might not make sense. There's so much silver. I don't know if it really creates that much of a hedge. It's more of an industrial metal, but gold and platinum could be a good way to do it. We, we don't have enough to, to actually do it. We'd have to create a system that uh, that allows us to do it in more of a fractional manner, but I, it, it would give us strength. It would make saving money again, make sense. Because right now, I mean, nobody makes any money saving money. Yeah, okay, the banks now are offering three and a half percent or four, whatever they're offering. That's temporary. They're not going to keep that there. They're just, the, the reason the banks are offering those returns right now is because everyone's pulling their money out of the banks. So that's the only reason they're offering those returns. They just need, they need capital because they're going to take your money and go out and invest it 10 times. So that's the only reason they're offering the short-term money at, you know, three or 4%. So yeah, I do think we should go back to it. I, there has been, there's a representative Mooney who's tried to pass a law to talk about going in and seeing how much gold we have and getting back on a gold standard, I think it would improve things. And, and then it would set government, our government in a position where they'd have to 
create a budget that we can stick to. And, and that's even more important than anything. We, eventually, I mean, what's the number? Is it 40 trillion that people stop paying us back? Is it 50 trillion? Or maybe China starts calling in some of these loans and says, you know, we, we own some of your property because you owe us so much money. Um, I don't know if you saw this, but DeSantis uh, has a, a, a uh, he's trying to pass a law right now that Chinese uh, yeah. nationals can't buy land in Florida because they, they know coming in here that, that as much as we right now, everyone's seeing in the housing market, they're like, I'm not going to buy it. Everything's overpriced. It's not. If you're in China right now, you're looking at land, you're looking at farmland in, in Florida, you're thinking, I'm, I'm putting my money here. I'd rather sink my money in Florida than sink my money in China or some other state. Uh, so he's trying to, to limit that and make it so that only you know U.S. Uh, citizens can buy that land, which I think is is really smart. It's really smart to to be careful about giving away some of our land, some of our assets. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just it's right now is a time for people to get educated on different things, diversification and, you know, people that have never called Noble Gold. And, you know, maybe this is the first time they've seen me or they just want to get learn about stuff that we do. Uh, I think it's a great time to get education. You know, we're coming up on the summer here. Uh, you're going on a vacation. Get our guides. Take them with you on vacation. Learn about what we're doing. Uh, but I think more importantly than anything is just learning about something that's different um, and maybe something that's not so mainstream uh, and, and taking a look at gold and silver maybe for the first time. Yep. And so I'll, I'll uh, ask one last question here because you are the CEO of Noble Gold. What makes Noble Gold stand out and why exactly should people uh, invest in Noble Gold compared to really anything else? Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing is, um, you know, I, our company is, a, is we call it the Noble Gold family. We, you know, we, we've built this, this incredible group of people that love what we do. And you can see that because we average anywhere from 50 to 60 reviews a month. And you can check out our reviews online. Um, and those are real reviews from clients that have done business with us. And you can see they name people at our company. There's a connection to those people. People are really uh, resonating with what we're doing. And it's because part of it is we have a great, just great group of people working for us. Number two is that I've always said, and this is the mantra of the company, is that it doesn't matter that we're selling gold and silver, platinum plate. We're really in the customer service business. That's the most important thing is that we're here for people and we answer the phone. You know, you're talking about gold being down a little bit. You know, some of the gold companies, gold drops, it's up. They don't want to pick up the phone or they sell you gold a year ago and you never hear from those guys again. You know, we're around. People call us. Once you buy from us, you're part of our family. We answer the phone. Uh, and I think people really like that connection to actually a real person and not an automated person or they're, you know, just online. Um, so we've sort of gone against the grain in a way and like added more staff, customer service staff and people for people to talk to. Uh, and I think it, people are enjoying that. People do want to talk to people, especially when you're investing or you're trying something new, you want to have a live person. Uh, and I think that's a big reason why, why people like what we do. We also, uh, you know, as much as, you know, this industry is unregulated in the precious metal space, we have a code of ethics that we believe in. We, we definitely do whatever we can to make the client happy as, as best as we can. Uh, we have a full customer service team and, you know, a lot of people involved in the, in the process. When we ship a package, we send it tracking number, we follow up. Uh, so we, I just think the little things that we've done have added a lot of value to people. And um, I think the customer service touch that concierge service is really what's what's made us stand out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely something I've gotten people that have reached out to me based off of uh, my uh, advertisements of Noble Gold, and they've said very positive things. So um, it, it's, uh, it's definitely something that I would encourage people to uh, invest in. And you can find that at the link in the description, pin comment down below. But thank you. Uh, Colin Plum, CEO of Noble Gold, for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah. So make sure you guys like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, follow me on social media. Um, the links are in this description down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Red Eagle out.